So I think the best place to start here is with the facts and the facts are that Liverpool are top of the Premier League once again after beating Chelsea 2-1 here at Anfield. But I have to say, this wasn't really the day or the game that I sort of expected coming into this one. I have to say, I think it's one of those where you know Chelsea, they've shown improvement, haven't they, under Enzo Maresca so far this season and they came into this in a decent position in the league. But I still thought when they come up against a serious outfit like Liverpool, who've consistently been challenging for trophies in recent seasons, that they might find it more difficult than they actually did. But I have to say, quite impressive, really, in their performance in certain aspects of it. And the, the numbers kind of bear that out. I mean, Liverpool 43% possession to Chelsea's 57 How many times is that going to happen at Anfield this season? I can't imagine very many. And also, Chelsea 12 shots to Liverpool's 8. So, you know, those raw statistics show a little bit of dominance, really. And I would say throughout the game, one of the things I don't think Liverpool ever really got to grips with was the fact that Chelsea continually kept walking their left back into midfield to create numerical superiority in that position and that allowed them then once they continually had that is to circulate the ball and find the extra man and then constantly get themselves on the front foot and into the final third and as I say Liverpool never really found a way to deal with that and I think that's something Slot will reflect on when he does the post-match analysis from this one is, is ways to stop sides doing that because it was so effective for Chelsea from basically minute 0 to, to 90 throughout the game that was a you know, a big aspect of their play and a big reason why they were so dominant in possession. And, you know, as much as the people might say that Slot maybe he wanted to allow Chelsea to have possession, I'm not so sure about that. I think he'd, he would want no sides were like at Feyenoord to, for Liverpool to be the side that is more dominant in possession and control in the game. Um, it, I, I don't think it's particularly Anfield that he'll want them to be the side that has to kind of sit in and soak up pressure. But if you do look at those raw statistics, it maybe shows that Chelsea were so dominant that they should have absolutely walked this game and Liverpool were backs to the wall constantly. But I don't actually think that is true. One thing I will give Liverpool and Slot absolute credit for, and I think what is a crucial factor, is that they are very, very hard to score against this season. And again, Chelsea might have had 12 shots to Liverpool's eight, but the shots on target count is five for Liverpool and just two for Chelsea. And that shows you that even though Chelsea were so dominant in possession, didn't find it difficult to get in the final third at all for much of this game, in terms of generating actually good opportunities, they really, really did struggle in that regard. As I say, I don't think that was a feature of Liverpool's tactical setup. I don't think they would have wanted Chelsea to come here and dominate possession. But once they did, and those were the, the facts of the game, they dealt with it in the best possible way by being so, so hard to score against. I mean, that has been a feature of the game so far, isn't it, this season? The fact that you know the goal they concede today is just the third goal they've conceded in the Premier League in eight games so far. Unbelievable defensive record, and that really, really paid dividends for them today. So. I'm sure there are a few things that, as I say, the manager will look at and, and want to learn from this one, but he will be really, really happy with the defensive performance. And I think maybe you'll also think that there's maybe some mitigating factors. Obviously, it's a post-international break. Liverpool were beaten by Nottingham Forest here last time they had an international break. It can disrupt the rhythm. Players going all over the world, playing in different systems. Uh, it can make things really difficult coming back in. Uh, you know, maybe that, that added to Liverpool's struggle a little bit. No McAllister, of course, he was only able to, to come off the bench after going to Argentina with a slight uh, niggle. Lose Jota quite early in the game. So a few disrupting elements for, for Liverpool, really, as mitigation for that. But as I say, they'll probably want to play, play, be play better going forward. But if they can't, be defensively solid. And that, for me, is what won the game uh, for Liverpool today. And, and, you know, it's not a performance they'll want to repeat but a very, very good win against the Chelsea side, who I think are going to finish quite high up the Premier League and surely, at the very least, will be in top four contention because I think they were quite uh, quite impressive in certain aspects of the performance today. Now, I'm just going to pick out a couple of individual performances that stood out to me and I think the obvious place to start is Curtis Jones. For me, absolutely the, the man of the match today. Uh, I just thought he was fantastic. I mean... You know, maybe a few eyebrows raised when he's on the starting lineup. Um, you know, replacing McAllister, who's such an important player, and I did describe you know losing McAllister for this one or, or only being able to use him as a substitute as a blow. But perhaps that you know doesn't give enough credit to Curtis Jones because he was, as I say, in that midfield so so crucial today. Liverpool, as you know, as I said earlier in the video, really never really got to grips with being outnumbered there but the one player who I thought kept things solid and really really helped them in there was Curtis Jones and just both sides of the ball absolutely brilliant I mean I'd start with the defensive work which we know he's very good at two out of three tackles one six out of eight ground drills I mean they are brilliant defensive numbers and the fact that Chelsea did have 
uh, more numbers in there uh, and, and always had the, the kind of overload in that central area it didn't seem to bother him he was getting in there winning his challenges making sure he got the ball and then using it really well and again two chances created he wins a penalty 90% passing accuracy and then the take for the goal is absolutely fantastic I mean a brilliant you know late run into the box he's a million miles on side because he times it so well great ball from Salah touch is brilliant maybe Sanchez should get out quicker but the composure from that point to just poke it home I think fantastic from Curtis Jones and you know he's so capable of this and we want to see a little bit more of it can he you know can he keep this up now can he avoid injuries which have been a real problem for him when he's been around the first team can he get that consistency and stick in and around the team because when he does and he plays like this He's an absolutely fabulous player, so solid uh, in everything he does, and he can be a goal threat and a threat in the final third as well. So I'm sure Arne Slot absolutely loved his performance today, and I really, really did as well. Uh, as I say, he was my man of the match. I thought he was absolutely fantastic. And another player I want to talk about as well, another scouser in the team, is Trent Alexander-Arnold. You might be wondering why I'm talking about him when I thought on the ball, a little bit iffy, 70% uh, passing accuracy, which is quite low for him. Didn't really create man many chances or opportunities. Wasn't influential there. And a big Part of that actually is the fact that I thought it was really interesting Chelsea's tactic, particularly in the first half, was just to sit Jaden Sancho uh, on him out of possession, so just man mark Trent wherever he went on the pitch. Really interesting approach. Will other sides try and uh, mimic that? We'll have to see. Uh, but it did kind of work in, in terms of shutting down Trent in terms of what he could uh, influence the game going forward, which is you know doesn't happen very often that he's this quiet. But the reason I'm singling him out and the reason I think his performance was incredible was what he did on the defensive side of things. I thought he was outstanding. Uh, Jaden Sancho, as I said, was following him all over the pitch in terms of trying to stop him influencing the attack. But then when he had the chance, he had you know several opportunities then to dribble at Trent, and he was just flawless uh, in those moments. Just stood up strong. He was you know keeping his feet moving quickly to make sure he couldn't get on the outside or the inside. Always there to get in and make a tackle. And um, you know his defensive numbers are really really good. Five out of seven ground duels won. Four clearances. Three of those with his head. So a little bit of last ditch stuff, putting his head where it hurts. Great to see that. And as I say with Sancho forced him off at half time he was that good in shutting him down and then Neto came on and you start to think that's worrying Neto he's got pace we know he's got quality very good in one on one situations but he just couldn't get anything out of him really really you know a couple of moments where his pace gets him on the outside but he, he's, Trent is so close that he stops the ball coming in or he, he can't get a quality cross in because Trent is close to him um, and otherwise just really shut him down on the defensive side interestingly in fact so much so that Neto actually went to the other side just before Joe Gomez came on to replace Trent that, that substitution, by the way, I think he's just managing Trent's minutes. He's more involved with England now, isn't he? So you really want to take care of him, make sure he gets a, he doesn't get an injury. But I just thought, as I say, on the defensive side of his game today, absolutely fantastic. And interesting, he's done that actually today uh, in that, you know, Roy Keane criticised him, didn't he, very harshly over the international break. I thought ridiculous, really, and not reflective of his, of his performances recently or his general performances in his career because I think too much is made of these the, you know defensive problems he's had. I mean, he's locked down some of the best wingers in the world whilst Liverpool have been one of the best defensive teams in the world. But I will say that I think his defensive game has just took a little notch up this season and again yet another fantastic performance on that side arguably his best yet this season because Chelsea had so much of the ball and so much threat but he was so concentrated won every challenge or, or as many as he could um, and I just thought fantastic so sure we won't be seeing any posts on social media or any uh, talk from Roy Keane about that one unfortunately but I do hope you watch because I thought Trent was uh, absolutely outstanding there uh, and, and utterly crucial uh, to Liverpool winning the match just a, a final honourable mention for Mo Salah obviously takes his penalty brilliantly and the, the assist is fantastic as well uh, you know if he's trying to make the case for Liverpool giving him that contract he can't do more than putting up the numbers he is at the moment can he he's always influential loves a goal uh, and, and a goal contribution in big games like this and particularly against to Chelsea as well so great to see him do that but as I say overall not a fantastic performance not a performance that Liverpool will look to repeat but getting a win in those circumstances and showing that defensive spirit and defensive strength is massively important we've seen a lot of that from Liverpool so far and hopefully that can give them the confidence now bouncing into the Champions League in midweek and then obviously a huge one coming up against a wounded animal in Arsenal so really looking forward to those challenges and hopefully we see slightly better performances from Liverpool because I think they'll need it uh, but very excited to see how they get on with these bigger tests that are coming on so I'm going to wrap it up there as ever if you can like and subscribe always massively appreciate that guys I mean I'm cl closing in on 20,000 subscribers at the moment so let's get me over that 
line if we can uh, can't believe how close i am to that now so really want to burst through that as soon as possible and as i say liking the video will always help get it out there as well uh, if you can and do let me know in the comments what you thought about the performance um, and, and you know who was your man of the match today and, and what you're thinking about the next couple of games that are coming up do let me know in the comments and i'll see you guys very very soon